Hello everybody and welcome back to m &J Games and specifically welcome back to the Planet, Co Planet Coaster Tutorial Basics. So last tutorial we built this basic roller coaster. As you can see this part looks a little bit different now because I've spent just a little bit more time smoothing it out. And so what I want to show you real quick is we did a little bit of smoothing at the end and specifically for inversions like this um, if you try to smooth too much at one time, so like let me see, if I try to do this, what ends up happening sometimes is, let's say I do that, okay that's actually working there fine because before when I accidentally did that, what it did is it actually smoothed it to a point where it didn't actually do a full turn. It started going in one way and actually came out the same way instead of twisting through. So sometimes the best way to do it, even if you're not on four meter track, is to take three or four sections at a time and smooth those and then move on to the next pair of four meters and so you just move one notch each time. Now that takes a long time but when you do these custom inversions that's honestly the best way to get it get it smoothed out. And as you'll see we're not going to do too much of this on this video but I just wanted to do just a little bit just to show you um, you know and it takes a while to do this. So me personally I don't do that many custom inversions just because of um, the time that it takes and on top of that how um, how uh, so let's see let's see how this looks and um, it takes extra pieces so it can definitely affect the Oswald meter if you have way too many of those on your rides so let's see how this looks did that help at all alright so that helped a little bit so it's getting there but it still has a ways to go so what we're actually gonna look at today is we're going to look at what's called block sections okay and so we're actually going to change up the end of this ride just a little bit. So I'm going to actually delete that. Actually, no, I don't want to delete that one. Um, let's delete this one right here. So we're going to delete this because I want to show you what a block section is and how that works. So right here, I'm going to actually um, bank it a little bit. And I'm going to raise it up. So now... See why is it banking? Oh, you pressed on the button. There we go. So I'm gonna bank it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn this into a hill, into a, um, to a little bit of a hill, and I'm gonna have it at the top. I'm gonna to set what's called um, block sections, and a block section is essentially a point on the track that lets the other train know through a computer system that okay you're free to you're free to go on so for example the only way that you can really have multiple roller coasters on a track without building a really long station is if you have block sections so if you go up here and you go to the right you've got different types of brakes right drive tires are what actually moves it around the track to where it doesn't allow the coaster to get stopped at all and then here we have block section now me personally I like to turn this up just because I don't want my coaster to come to a complete halt essentially and so I put release speed and so forth. And now I just could put one of those and then I'll have to have at least one of those at the end. So now after that, I can then um, have a hill. And so I'm going to have another little hill. And then now let's have another inversion. Let's do a, let's do an Immelman. So we gotta make it a little bit smaller because of there we go so now I'm just gonna turn this just a tad bit because just by turning it it's gonna make the track go to the left instead of like if I went right here the tracks going right at the roller coaster right it's going right through which we don't want that to happen so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it just a tad bit you can do it either way I'm gonna turn it just a little bit why that happen all right um, Go back here, yeah. So I'm just gonna turn it just a little bit that way. So now I can have my coaster come down. Sorry, sometimes it gets a little, yep. So now I'm going to do one last inversion. So let me do a, let's do a corkscrew. So 
So I'm going to actually lower. Actually, that's as small as it go. Okay. So I'm just going to have to work with the terrain a little bit here afterwards. Or what I can do is this one right here, I can actually level this out. Or start to level it out. Let me go back so that it races that. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to start to level this out. So now I want to do an inline heart roll instead of a corkscrew. So you can either do this one manually or you can do the ones that are given to you. And so I like the ones that are given to you. I mean, they're pretty good. So I'm just going to extend this out, make it a little bit longer. There we go. But now I need to turn it, which I might not have given myself enough room. So let me actually go up a little bit. Yeah. And so usually what I'd say when you're creating a coaster, it, it's smart to, to do research, to figure out, okay, what type of coaster do I want to have? What do most of these look like in real life and so forth? Um, so now what I'm going to do is, let me, yep. So I'm going to put a block section here. Um, actually, you know what? I need to do that from here. So I'm gonna do it from here. He's doing it this way allows me to know um, okay where does my ride need to end at so there's gonna be my block section so now what I can do is I can go back with this and I can adjust the ride to feet or to feet to fit the need of what what's being asked right there so I'm actually going to lower this down um, let's go this way and now I'm going to loop it around to get back there so I'm going to start banking it Make it a little bit harder. And then just a little bit of a, so I can probably do a little bit more or wider of a bank too. Then have it elevate just a little bit. There we go. So now, and look, that looks very awkward right there, right? But what I can do now is I can take this and I can, and I can just smooth it out to where it's gonna completely smooth that whole thing out. And you can keep doing it until, until it gets to where you want it to be. Um, so it's just about making sure that we're smoothing out the coaster. And now this, this uh, block section can't actually turn it all, so it's just gonna keep smoothing this part till we get to there. So now let me smooth everything else out. Let's give me a couple minutes. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. So. So now since we have two block sections, um, and let me actually look at this one. So let me change the speed on this one because we obviously want it to slow down as it comes into the station. So I'm gonna put it at six. I mean, you don't want your coaster to just fly into the station. So release speed. There we go. So now let's test the ride. Um, and what actually before I do that, what I want to do is I want to exit out of this. And if you look up here at the top, okay. Um, and you hit the R1 tab, R1 button, you can go over here to where it says ride operations. If you have enough block sections, you can turn this from standard, excuse me, to block section. Now I can do two trains. Since I have two block sections on the ride, I can do two trains. So in theory, the ride is, you can do is have as many cars as as many block stations you have, or block sections you have on the ride. Now, I really don't suggest doing more than two because what happens a lot of times is you see on some rides that the the coaster ends up um, stopping at the top of the lift hill and that's simply because there are too many cars on the track or too many trains on the track at one time. So let's see how this ride is. Now there's gonna be a couple parts that aren't smooth yet, but that's fine. We just wanna make sure it gets through the whole ride and has enough speed.
was a fairly good transition for not being smoothed out at all yet, but it'll definitely have to be smoothed out. comes into the station at a good speed. There we go. So that's how block sections work. Normally what you want to do is you want to put one somewhere in the middle of the ride towards the latter third is kind of the rule of thumb. Um, because as you can see, this car is actually going to leave before it gets to this block section. And that's because technically the lift chain serves as the block section. So let's um, just for just for um, to be able to show you what I'm talking about. Let's move this, let's say, so it won't let me have, oh, it actually will let me have three. So I want to show this to you just so we can see why. If you have three or as many trains or three trains on here, why this messes up, okay? So you see how that, you see how that one's waiting right there. So it waits right there until the end and then it might not be able to get back over the hill. Nope. So that one didn't get over the hill. So that's why it doesn't work because it doesn't have enough speed. Well, let's look at another example. So let's say you're saying, well, I just want to put an extra block section here on the end then. So let's see if that will work. So let's edit this. I mean, so what I'm trying to do is just teach you a little bit about how the block sections work and kind of how they're set up. And, you know, I've never worked at a theme park or anything like that. So I'm not pretending to know that or act like I know exactly how they are. Um, but normally you don't see multiple of them here at the end, right? And so if you had three cars, you see how... Actually, you know what? I need to redo this too. Because you got to have at least, like, I have two block sections in a row. And the reason why the third car didn't go to that end block section is because you, the rule of thumb is you got to have at least a piece of track in between the two block sections. Um, so let's shorten this one up. We'll have that be a block section. And then let's turn this one to just a normal piece of track. There we go. All right. So now. So now we can go back here and standard block section. All right, so let me let me redo this a little bit. So I think probably the track length is not long enough there. So that's probably why it's showing up like this. Um, let me go back to where I had it. Let's do this right here. So if you go from this part right here, what I can do is I can delete that and then I'm going to shorten this up a little bit to 10 meters. And then I'm going to put friction brakes in the middle. And then I'm going to put the block section. And then now what I need to do is I need to go back to, um, I need to go back to this section right here and I need this to connect. So then I can connect it that way. And now, Oh, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to hit X, but accidentally pressed triangle. So I accidentally deleted it all. So now we can see that. So now they, um, if we test this, now we see all three cars right there, right? So let's test this and let's see why, at least if if this has been, if my assumption on this is true and what I've done before plays out, this will not work properly. So we're going to fast forward a little bit. So now we see this train goes to the top of the hill. That one's not going to leave until that one at least gets to the top of the lift hill. Now this one goes to the top of the lift hill and it's going to stop, I believe. All right. So this actually for this particular instance worked out fine because in general, it wouldn't have stopped if the train didn't get here to the block section first. So let's see which one's going to make it. All right, so it made it to the block section first, so that's not actually going to stop the train up here. So I did not give you a good example here because the example I gave actually didn't work out. But let's pretend like, you know, they're going to have to load people on the train. Well, if they don't load on fast enough, it's going to end up being like that. And so I'll show you that in a later episode. So the next episode, we're going to create a basic station. 
So this episode was about block sections, and I hope that this was helpful. And um, as always, please leave comments. Let me know what you think about the videos, if any of this is helpful, or if you have any other information you want to add, um, or if there are any particular videos you'd like for me to make, please let me know. Um, and as always, make sure and subscribe to the channel so that you can know when I release videos. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.